Parliament pass law on independent commission against corruption. Severely burned child medevac to lay. And oil search begins world-class renewable energy project. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Thursday's news. Oil Search Limited is prepared to lay the foundation for a world-class integrated renewable energy project. Country manager Leon Baskins affirmed the company's commitment in a recent meeting with key stakeholders in Port Moresby. Through the option of a biomass project, Oil Search will build a new power generation in Markham Valley in the Morbe province. The plant will generate 30 megawatts and hopes to meet the demand in electricity supply. Electricity supply is still a challenge in the country as consecutive governments open more dialogue to diversify and ensure the future of energy in the country is reliable, affordable and dispatchable. The oil search country manager affirmed the company's intention and progress to develop a renewable energy initiative. Our work with Biomass targets a number of key development priorities. I think I'll go through them. We, we directly support the electrification of our country, and as I said earlier, I think it's important that uh, we want to be part of it. We want to be partners. You know, it's not about just us alone, but we want to look at how we can all partner together, how we can deliver, how we can harness something special that's uh, that's we've been, you know, at the, at the front of it, and, and and our learning is about sharing, it's about collaboration. It's not only about us. Baskins was speaking in a presentation between different stakeholders for the biomass project in Makam Valley. The biomass power plant will generate 33 megawatts and address the demand of electricity in Morobe and hopefully parts of Medang or the Highlands provinces. Deputy Prime Minister Sam Basil says the project is an example of the new power generation paradigm. For our country, pathway to developing and functioning of power sector is not forged overnight. And I believe that since 2009, uh, biomass project has been initiated and it's still successful and, and waiting for the government and the stakeholders to come together to make it happen. In attendance was also the new chief executive of PNG Power Limited, Flagon Becker. Becker spoke of better dialogue to collaborate and improve electricity supply to the current grid. Minister for Energy William Onglo says right now 15% of the country access electricity with the government targeting 2030 to reach 70% of households. The but it's achievable if we work with IPP partners, we work with our PEC partners. Jack LaPauva, Junior National MTV News. The Organic Law on the Independent Commission Against Corruption 2019 was unanimously passed in Parliament today, voting 96 to 0. ICAC will now operate as an independent constitutional office with commissioners to be recruited abroad. Prime Minister James Marape thanked all members of Parliament who voted for this bill to be made a law. The ICAC bill, although a little overdue, was made a law today. The ICAC agenda was initiated by the Somare government back in 2002, picked up by the O'Neill government who kept it alive from 2011, and finally made a law by the Marape Basile government. Prime Minister James Marape thanked the Attorney General and other coalition partners who ensured this bill was passed in today's parliament sitting. Uh, and we were fortunate that we had a bipartisan approach today. The opposition members who were present in chamber, uh, 16 of them also rendered support. Early in the morning, we had a bipartisan meeting with uh, the SEDO Attorney General and, and the opposition whip, uh, and they uh, agreed with us, and we delivered the long outstanding uh, ICAC bill today, and the organic law will go on its way to be fully established. He assured the nation that this constitutional office will work independently from the executive government. Set it up at arm's length from, from uh, the executive arm. And I think the present law provides for the, uh, the separation and it's a constitutional office. Just like every constitutional office that the executive has no direct control in day-to-day -day running of, the, of a constitutional office. So that, that length is already given. 
Coalition partners also showed their support and expressed satisfaction at the passing of this legislation. Um, we understand that ICAG has a broader um, range of um, um, scope. scope of its operation, um, unlike the others that uh, currently we have in PNG. Uh, we will support it and make sure that uh, it becomes a reality for Papua New Guineans. Uh, ICAG is going to be responsible for uh, not only leaders, but other members of the community, other leaders of the community uh, who conduct the business in our country. And if there are any questions of Ill illegality involved <coughs> in the contact, uh, in their conduct, uh, ICAC is uh, the legisl legislative body that will uh, ensure that uh, people are held to account. We just uh, witnessed another important and historic uh, milestone in the southeast of this country. ICAC bill has been talked about and has been on the table for many governments over the years. But today, what happened was unbelievable. And may I say, surprising to a number of observers who were dealing, particularly from overseas, who were not sure whether this government would be able to achieve what has been on the table for many governments over the years. Police Minister Brian Kramer briefly responded to concerns of role duplication and disharmony. While this has been in the press recently on the OC raising concerns about a duplication, duplicating a, a function does not make something unconstitutional. In fact, uh, the ICAC is not something new uh, to the globe and other jurisdictions have introduced it and it demonstrates the, our government's commitment to reform and that reform then builds confidence with our um, other bilateral partners. And Attorney General David Steven, in doing a final reading before the law was passed, said these laws were not written on stone and can be amended as they go along. He said it was now urgent to pass this law and that's what they just did. You know, our focus now, many might say, is on the next elections. But what we have done today is for the next generation. ICAC now is a law and a new ICAC office will be established with three commissioners recruited overseas for transparency purposes. The ICAC institution will work with existing government institutions like the Ombudsman Commission, Public Prosecutor and the Police to fight corruption. Ruth Rungula, National MTV News. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison is confirmed to visit Papua New Guinea from the 18th to the 19th of November next week. The Prime Minister in a statement confirmed this visit. He stated he will be visiting Japan from November 17th to the 18th and PNG from 18th to the 19th of November. He added this will be an important meeting with Marape and they will continue discussions about advancing shared regional and global objectives ahead of a formal bilateral visit Morrison hopes to make next year. Prime Minister James Marape confirmed Morrison's visit but did not disclose any details. Meanwhile, opposition leader Belden Nama is not happy with this announcement. He says the timing for Scott Morrison's visit is highly suspicious as the opposition prepares to moot a motion of no confidence against James Marape. He called on Morrison to defer this visit in the name of good diplomacy until the motion on the vote of no confidence is tabled and the process to elect a new prime minister complete. You're watching National MTV News. Among stories after the break, Manalos Aviation Medivac's eight-month-old burnt child or search embarks on a renewable energy project and GDP report for 2018 released. Details after the break. Welcome back. An eight-month old child was medevac to lay early this afternoon after his legs were severely burned in a fire. Lay-based Manolos Aviation rescued the child hours after receiving the reports. Company owner and chief pilot Jürgen Rue said they don't have adequate funds for medevacs with a large unpaid bill by the Morbe provincial government but still had to make the trip. Just after 2 p.m., the Manolos helicopter flew in from a village along the border of the Eastern Highlands and Borobe. On board, an eight-month-old baby with severe burns. Manolos staff said he was learning to walk and in the care of other older kids when he fell into a fire. We have a um, request from Imane, head post, 
and we have a baby of eight months old with fire burn and more than nine percent and it's critical for emergency case so we're taking the baby to the hospital Manolos Aviation got the call at about midday. The company is struggling with unpaid bills owed to them by the Morabe provincial government. And today, after some radio communication and prompting by staff, Chief Pilot Jürgen Ruh decided to make the flight. So for me, I can't say no. But this year, we have seen zero Kina, zero Toya. I haven't been paid for more than one year, and this was my number 65 flight unpaid. And the delay in payments has put a strain on their operations. They've had to limit the number of medivacs this year. The baby has been admitted to Angau Hospital. Scott Wade, National MTV News, Lee. A memorandum of understanding signed between the Western Provincial Government, National Fisheries Authority and the Chinese government is desired to give locals in Daru direct access to the Chinese market. The MOA signed in Port Moresby today signals the start of a dialogue between the implementing parties to build a fisheries park in Western. The signing of the MOU is the first step taken in this partnership to create opportunities for small to medium entrepreneurs in Western Province, an investment that the Western Governor has described as big opportunities for local fishermen in Western. That opportunity for people to have access to the largest market, and I know that will also help <clears throat> other provinces around the country to also access it sell their marine products to, to China, and which is a big achievement for our government and for our little people who are villagers, simple fishermen. The MOU now paves the way for technical teams to commence feasibility studies and design a fisheries industrial park. The Chinese government, through the Fujian Zhonghong Hongdong Company, will be responsible for the establishment of this fisheries park. China has always support, uh, you know, uh, mutual beneficial cooperation with PNG because China and PNG enjoy a very good uh, relations, not only under the Marape government but also for the previous government. So we have a good foundation for further uh, cooperation. Through this investment, 20 students from Western will be sent to the Fujian University of Business to further their studies in China. Under the Marape Basil regime, the government is looking at creating conducive environment for investors. This MOU signing is an important project that will bring direct benefits to the community level. As we sign this MOU, it will pave the way for many other things in terms of compliance and other things that we need to do to realize the potential. I think um, um, the amount that we are looking is close to 150 million US uh, dollars. And I think, I think it's quite a substantial amount of foreign direct investment that is coming into this country. Not only will they uh, fish and not only will they uh, unnest the resource that we have, but it will create uh, more jobs for our people. It will create more income for uh, our ordinary people as well as uh, the fly provincial government. Western is a maritime province and has great economic potential for delivering such projects in the fisheries industry. However, illegal fishing of tuna, sea cucumbers and other marine resources are commonly reported in Western. But with this setup, it is predicted that such illegal activities will be minimized through the maritime surveillance in partnership with the Papua New Guinea Defense Force. Thakla Gunga, National MTV News. Heavy rains currently experienced in some parts of the country might be a blessing to some, but now threatens the livelihood of some 35,000 people living in the Gazelle district of East New Britain province. Continuous rainfall in the province is filling up the mine vets at the abandoned Sinivit gold mine. If it overflows, there is a high risk of cyanide getting into the river. This grave concern was raised by the governor for East New Britain, Nakikus Konga, in parliament today. 
Now, when I went up there with the Minister for Mining some three months ago, the Atavet, which is now flowing down to the Karevet River, if you have another rainfall, and another heavy rainfall, that will be lost gold, so that will poison, which will now affect the gasoil open uh, electrode. Uh, it is a major problem because we have uh, cyanide waste exposed. And unfortunately, and unfortunately the Nengmakta Creek, that basically fits down into the Wayango River system, is a small creek. And so it is not able to dilute to the extent that you and we could expect it to be safe in the event that there is a major. So coming back to Kui's question, I've written to the Prime Minister, I've raised it with uh, other relevant uh, ministers in cabinet on the need for us to look at the budget in 2021, to put some serious money into it so that we don't on, not only address wild dog, but also look at Tolokuma as well. So I have, uh, I, I will assure the Honourable Governor that uh, towards the end of this Parliament session, uh, I will visit this uh, I'll go to Wild Dog. We need to do an aerial surveillance so we can be able to scope how it could be removed because cyanide is not an ordinary waste. It is very toxic. With a lot of young Papua New Guineans putting effort into scientific research, there are no set policy guidelines. According to the Health Minister, Sir Puka Temu, the Department of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology is responsible for this and is still working on the policy. This was in response to member for Obura Woninara, Mara Kipefa. The minister also explained that the research by Biomed Limited is now closely monitored by the Medical Research Advisory Committee and the PNG Institute of medical research following the endorsement and funding support by NEC. What is the plan that the government will take uh, in relation if the organization uh, discover or if the organization come up with a result and how will the result be tested? How will the, the result be accepted uh, through the scientific community both in PNG as well as international? There is a policy ready, but I will ask my uh, core, core uh, uh, friend, uh, Minister of Higher Education, to look at that, and that needs to come to Cabinet. Papua New Guinea for the last three months has not reported any deaths relating to COVID-19. The number of deaths still remains at seven, and the total number of COVID-19 cases as of yesterday is 599. Health Minister Sir Pukatemu gave a brief update in Parliament today following questions raised by Member for Alatao, Charles Abel. Exactly what the uh, status of the COVID virus is in Papua New Guinea in relation to the number of deaths that have actually occurred, number of infections, and who has recovered. Also, Mr. Deputy Speaker, have there been the expected impacts on our people in terms of all the fear that, uh, and the impacts that we actually talked about and projected? Also, do we understand uh, perhaps why Papua New Guinea is not affected in the same way that other countries uh, have been affected? Because we do not have the high rate of testing in the country, we may not be detecting the numbers that we should be detecting. But at the same time, I can give at least some comfort to the country and assurance to the country that we are not seeing a high rate of facility-based respiratory illnesses. The reasons for why we have a low rate in the country at the moment, we really have no evidence because COVID-19 is a new disease and there's not much knowledge globally. Remember that when COVID-19 first came, we took the hard road through the Prime Minister's leadership. We shut down the flights. We did a state of emergency. But I think we have, we have now learned a lot of lessons. So uh, we are now under the COVID-19 legislation rather than the state of uh, uh, emergency legislation. But the uh, Controller still has their control and there is a committee established under the Pandemic Act. 
And now looking at the Nasfund market reports, the Kina opened unchanged at 0 0.2860 US dollars in the interbank markets. At Bank South Pacific, Yokina is buying 0.2785 US dollars, 0.3785 Australian dollars, 0.4011 New Zealand dollars and 28.70 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York, closed gold is trading higher, coffee and copra closed higher, cocoa closed lower. Crude oil is trading higher, palm oil and copper closed lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading higher and the All Ordinaries is trading higher. National MTV News continues with more stories after these messages. Don't go away. Welcome back to the news. Medang National Court has granted bail for the two senior public servants charged for alleged misappropriation of 6 million kina for the Manam resettlement on Monday. Deputy Administrator Joseph Kunda Bonomane said the former provincial administrator Paul Amera and the former provincial administrator Paul Amera, the two were released on a 2,000 kina court bail. Deputy Administrator Joseph Kunda Bonomane was charged with two counts of misappropriation involving six million kina of Manam funds, while Paul Amera was charged with one count of misappropriation and one count of abuse of office. On Monday, the two were taken into the town police station right behind me where they were questioned before being charged. They were then locked up at the Jomba police station town cell until yesterday court granted them bail. Both senior public servants were ordered nine bail conditions, including not leaving the province without the consent of the senior provincial magistrate or the judge. They are to report to the OIC CID Stephen Yalomu every Monday between 8 and 4 p.m. and must not in any way interfere with state witnesses. Martha Lewis, National and TV News, Medang. The National Statistical Office, today with various partners, has released the country's Gross Domestic Product, or GDP, report for 2018. The 2018 PNG National Accounts, released yesterday, shows that the size of the economy has increased from 2017. The GDP report was prepared and released by the Economic Statistical Division of the National Statistical Office. The presentation of the 2018 Gross Domestic Product Report saw all stakeholders in attendance. The report highlighted 2018 GDP levels, GDP growth and key industries that contribute to the country's economy in the period of 2011 to 2018. The 2018 PNG National Account shows that the size of the economy has reached 79.4 billion kina in current price terms, reflecting a 9.7 increase from 2017. Our Gross Domestic Product figures that the PNG economy has grown significantly in size, has grown up to compare with the other Pacific island nations. And according to what I have here, it's about 80 million, 80 billion in 2018. So that's a great improvement. Though we have gone through our sort of up and down. The really shows that the size of the economy has grown from 31.5 billion kina in 2008 to 79.4 billion kina in 2018. It also highlighted a significant drop in LNG production and mining activities due to the impacts of earthquake in parts of the country. However, the mining sector, agriculture, fisheries and forestry remains the key contributing factor to the 2018 GDP growth. The production of all oil and gas was greatly affected with decline in that year. However, the price of all oil and gas were favorable, causing the crack, causing the current price GDP to increase. In terms of constant price, the size of the economy has reached 62.9 billion kina, reflecting a 0.3% decrease from 2017. This represents a decrease in the quantity of goods and services produced by the PNG economy from 2017 to 2018. The key driver of the decrease in constant price GDP was mining and quarrying.
The gross value added or ZVA is also calculated in this release that provides sector performances. It provides a keener value for the amount of goods and services that have been produced in the country. You can see that agriculture, forestry and fishing had a moderate positive growth in both the current price and the constant price from 2017 to 2018. Mining showed a strong growth in current price but a decline in constant price. The 2018 GDP report was prepared and released by the Economic Statistical Division of the National Statistical Office. And it is part of the efforts to ensure reliable statistics is made available for national development. The 2019 GDP report will be released in November next year. We produce this uh, national accounts figures on an annual basis. Uh, it is very critical for GDP related communi communications because one, uh, building public trust and support for official statistics is important in the world of social media and biased uh, judgments. Uh, two, uh, clear communication is necessary to ensure that users, researchers and policy makers understand and use the national accounts that are correctly. Rayon Lakingu National, MTV News. They are deepening their engagements in the Pacific, with the Ambassador Aaron McKee declaring that they are here to stay. The Ambassador was speaking during an update of the construction of the new U.S. Embassy compound in Port Moresby. Just days of the elections which saw citizens divided on the political front and now uniting to remember veterans that have fallen and fought in the name of democracy. The U.S. Ambassador to PNG, Solomon Islands and Vanuatu, Ambassador Erin McKee, together with other U.S. officials here in PNG, also took the time to remember U.S. soldiers that had fought on PNG soil during World War II. Joined by Police Minister Brian Kramer and Minister for Transport and Infrastructure William Sam and also Solomon Islands High Commissioner to PNG, Mr. Barnabas Anga, the guest had speeches from U.S. officials based in U.S. paying tribute to U.S. veterans who fought in the Pacific and committing to expanding the U.S. presence in the Pacific. And when the election is over, we search for ways to reconnect with one another, with our fundamental principles that are more enduring than transitory politics. Some of our best examples of these principles are embodied in the men and women we salute on Veterans Day. The ambassador also took the opportunity to update the guests on the construction of the new U.S. Embassy in Port Moresby. The structures you see rising up around you, almost nearly complete, represent America's enduring commitment to democracy, human rights, sustainable economic development for Papua New Guinea, for Solomon Islands, for Vanuatu, and for the entire Pacific. Because of security reasons, we weren't allowed to film the construction. The new U.S. Embassy compound covers seven and a quarter acre of land at Harbor City. It is now at the final construction phase and is expected to be completed in the coming months. will be a safe, secure, and resilient workspace that will serve us and our three host country nations for decades to come. And that is a very good thing because the United States is here to stay. Shamin Poreambev, National MTV News. Young women from Selepet LLG of Kabum District, Morbe, say it's difficult for them to complete their primary and secondary education. In the Bomo community, most children are still out of school, with fewer girls going to school. Julie Badua Oa reports. In the Bomo community of Celebet, fewer girls are going to school. Many girls drop out of school during their primary years. Many of the families are unable to pay for their school fees or the schools are too far away. Many of the girls end up getting married in their teens. 17-year-old Elaine Goreka had her first child before completing 10th grade. <laughs> We go, um, so man been talk, just like, they let carry me, no blow me, no blow me. The government aims to lead the way in achieving the global 2030 agenda for sustainable development for every child to have right to quality education. The Morbe provincial government has also been emphasizing on zero dropouts from elementary schools to college and universities. 
For 17-year-old Elaine, she continues to do what she can as a mother to a young child. <laughs> Big pam, no big pam, my name is Akisi Osem, Miss Akisi Osem, Miss Awok, no, 10 to 20 to. 17 year old Elaine hopes to continue her education and become a teacher. The women in Bomu said they want to see their daughters have the same education opportunities as the boys. They say they want to see more elementary and secondary schools being built for their children. Julie Badui Oa, National MTV News. And Chuka Sports is next. Fidley Sukina has the details. Yes, Helen Trukai donates sporting kits for schools and PNG Bowls gets assistance for this weekend's competition. Join me for Trukai Sports after this break. Tukai Sports. And good night and welcome to Tukai Sports. Keeping fit and healthy is also part of the school curriculum and Tukai Industries Limited has embarked on a sports kit donation drive to schools within Port Mosby. This is under Tukai's Healthy Living and Healthy Eating platform. In this program, 10 schools have been identified to receive the donation. 10 schools in the National Capital District have been chosen by Trukai Industries Limited to receive a box containing 60 sporting balls of six different sporting codes. Under Trukai's Healthy Living and Healthy Eating Drive, schools like Bavaroko Primary School had their sports kit handed to them today. This is part of um, Truka Industries' um, corporate social responsibility. So today we've come to Bavaroko Primary School and we've um, donated balls to the school. So we've given some basketball balls, some um, rugby balls, some netball balls, volleyball balls and soccer balls and we're hoping that the school can utilize it for their physical education um, activities. Truka's event manager, Christine Miria, says that the company wants the students to be active in sports, but also this is a lead-up to a Trukai Schools program, which will come into fruition in future. Ideally, what we're looking at is um, encouraging the students to um, play and keep fit during this COVID period. So um, Trukai Industries is looking at um, a school program, which we aim to roll out in um, the next year. So we're hoping that the schools can come on board and support us for it. Therefore, we've um, started with doing our school kit donation as of yesterday. With some schools in the nation's capital finding it hard to continue with their sports programs, especially for physical education, Bavaroko Primary School sports master Daniel Cooley says it is a relief that Trukai has chosen to give sports equipment to the school. Uh, as the sports uh, coordinator, I'm pleased to have this because uh, since then uh, we didn't have uh, you know, enough uh, rugby balls and soccer balls for uh, games this year. And also because of the COVID-19, uh, we didn't have uh, sports programs were you know, suspended. So uh, with these balls, I think next year uh, and hopefully the following years, we'll uh, try to organize our students to utilize these balls. and. Uh, play to, to their best. The famous PNG Bowls Takaru Force Cup is up for grabs this weekend with help from Bank of PNG and PNG Ports. 17,000 Kina was presented to the PNG Bowls Association to support the competition. BPNG Governor Loi Bakani said BPNG is delighted to assist and would continue their support into the future. PNG Ports representative Mr. Clem Kafare also shared similar sentiments and said PNG Ports is looking forward to attending the competition. PNG Bolts President and former PNG DF Force Sergeant, Major Retired Chief Warrant Officer Joe Kamane, when receiving the check, thank BPNG and PNG Ports for their timely support. Defending champions, Boroko Metro Bolts will be back to defend their title this year. 
24 teams are confirmed to participate in the tournament, with most of the teams flying in from outside centers. Yana Zoriri, Chukai Sports. 38 local coaches and physical education teachers from Hula Village took part in a workshop conducted by the High Performance Center. The week-long workshop concluded yesterday. Cornelius Papao, PNG High Performance Manager, said the certification will empower in various sporting profiles. And Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. And welcome back to Trukai Sports. To rugby union overseas, a rapid rise in rugby is almost complete for Kelsey Willis. Kelsey Wills, from lifting high above a net to being lifted in the middle of a lineout, Wills plays her first game for the Black Ferns this weekend. Kelsey Wills looks right at home in the Black Ferns environment, but two years ago she wasn't even playing rugby, let alone getting ready to start at lock for New Zealand. Pretty cool. <laughs> Hers is the kind of meteoric rise that could annoy those who've spent their life in the game, like her boyfriend, Bay of Plenty and Highlanders prop Jeff Thwaites. Probably a bit, you know, a bit pissed about it. <laughs> you know, it's a bit unfair, isn't it? <laughs> the 27 year old has sporting pedigree, though. She played beach volleyball for New Zealand, only making the switch after a disappointing fifth finish at the 2018 Commonwealth Games. Her teammates say it's her attitude that's really been key. She's super keen, she puts her hand up to, to do things, she wants to be involved, she's always wanting to be better, and that's all you can really ask for an athlete. Wills and her team have access to the best. The Black Ferns working with the likes of Super Scrum and former All Blacks coach Mike Cron as they build up to their matches against the Barbarians. That's the real gold, gold nuggets that you get is those little micro skills that um, you wouldn't kind of get anywhere else um, except from him and it's as simple as you know maybe turning your hand out or like rolling a shoulder. Wills has had to learn it all fast. Rules, strategy, everything. And while she lives with a professional player, Practicing with him hasn't been that successful. I think we've done like one line out together before and I, it was quite scary for me. It was quite, quite high. <laughs> this weekend, Wills will achieve the highest honour in another sport. And while she admits to a few nerves, she says there's no one else she'd rather do it with than her new teammates. And that story wraps up Trukai Sports. Helen will be back with the weather report for the next 24 hours. Bye for now. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Fine weather in Port Moresby, Daru, Karamand, Alatau, and rain showers in Popandita. In the Mamasu region, mostly fine tonight, then possible early morning rain tomorrow in Lee. Evening rain showers, then fine tomorrow, then possible afternoon thundery showers in Middang. Evening rain showers, then fine weather tomorrow in Wewak and Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, mostly fine weather in Lorengau and Kaviang. Rain showers tonight clearing in the morning. Then afternoon thundery showers in Kokopo and Robal. Evening rain showers, then partly cloudy tomorrow with afternoon thundery showers in Kimbe. And rain showers tonight, then cloudy tomorrow with afternoon showers in Buka. And in the Highlands region, evening rain showers, then morning fog clearing for a fine day, then possible afternoon showers tomorrow in Mount Hagen. Evening rain showers, then morning fog clearing for a fine day tomorrow in Goroka and Kundiawa. And evening showers, then morning fog clearing for a fine day in Mendi and Wabeg. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that's been the news, sport and weather for today, Thursday, 12th of October 2020. On behalf of the news team, pleasant viewing. Good night.